Okay, hello there ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I'm just going to have a quick video for you to sort of uh, explain how uh, Java actually sorts um, some of its collections. Now, um, this I'm not going to explain exactly what algorithm Java uses to sort. Um, the, the algorithm I'm going to show you is one type of sorting algorithm. It's actually called the uh, bubble sort. And um, and there's a you know a bunch of different ways that you can go about sorting a list. Um, bubble sort's definitely one of them. Um, it's not the best one, but it's it's fairly easy to to demonstrate. And this is this is why the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to show you um, the idea behind how Java does sorting. Okay, so the whole point for this video is to put um, things like the comparable interface or the uh, comparator okay so the, these are the sort of interfaces that you can use um, inside of your Java coding that um, will will actually do the sorting for you and they they have two different methods that you can use um, and that's the whole reason why I'm showing you this because when you see how the bubble sort works um, you'll immediately understand how it is and why it is that the comparable or the comparator um, exists the way they, they do and, and why it is that they have you implement the code that you will need to implement. Okay, so that's sort of the big picture. So let's start with an unsorted list. Okay, so let's just do um, a standard uh, bunch of numbers. Let's say I have uh, five different numbers um, in unsorted order like so one two three four five and we w we now want to sort through this list how does bubble sort do it well it actually works its way through the list and compares each uh, pair of numbers and will swap them if they're in the wrong order it goes through and swaps and it goes through and swaps and it goes through and swaps and it keeps on going and resetting back to the beginning um, and swapping until it has gone through the list and it has not performed a single swap okay so how that would look is well the first swap would be three and six so since we're going to be um, doing this in ascending order okay so from small smallest to uh, to biggest is three smaller than six yes it is so there's no need for a swap is six less than seven um, yes it is so there's no need for a swap is seven less than one no it isn't seven is bigger than one so we're going to need a swap so it will go ahead and swap the items oops so I'll swap one and seven you see how those flipped around there and uh, and it leaves two alone and then um, since it just swapped these two and that goes to the next sort of index and checks it says is seven um, less than two no it isn't so we need to swap okay so then it does the same thing it will swap those two numbers so three six one and then it'll do two and seven because it swaps the two and seven right here so that's um so this is sort of like the first iteration okay and it we performed uh two swaps okay so we swapped the seven and the one and we swapped the uh the two and the seven okay so since we did indeed perform swaps we need to go back and do the same thing all over again from the beginning so we go through and say okay um three and six or sorry I need to be looking at this one is three less than six yes it is is six less than one no it isn't so we need to f uh, swap the six and the one so if we swap six and one then we get three one six and uh, two seven okay so that's the first swap and then the second swap will be okay uh, we just swapped uh, swap these two so now we need to continue with six and two is six less than two uh, no it isn't so we need to swap those two okay so three, one, uh, two, six, and uh, and then seven. We just leave it alone, and then we do the same thing for the last two. Is six less than seven? Yes, it is. So we don't do any swaps. So there were two swaps for that one, and since there were some swaps, we need to go on to a third iteration through. Okay, so um, now we're left with this uh, scenario. So now we check three and one. Is three less than one? No, it isn't. So we need to swap. Okay. One, three, two, six, seven. So you see how each iteration we just do one swap. Okay, that's what I'm. That's the point I'm driving at here. And we're always comparing 
uh, one object against the other. And uh, so we'll keep doing that. Uh, we just did one and three, so now we continue. Now it's um, uh, three and two. Uh, is three less than two? No, it isn't, so we need to swap them. Okay, so one, two, three, six, seven. And then which one do we do? We did, uh, which one did we just do? We did three and two. There we go. So now since we did three and two, now we need to check three and six. Is three less than six? Yes, it is. Is six less than seven? Yes, it is. Okay, so we've done two swaps. And since we did two swaps, we need to go through and do one more check. So then it goes to the last iteration and it says, okay, is one less than two? Yes. Is two less than three? Yes. Is three less than six? Yes. Is six less than seven? Yes. So there you go. No swaps are done. So that means um, that we are now complete our, um, our whole operation. So now the, the swapping is done. So the bubble sort is done and our list is now sorted. So what was that? Two four, six different swaps that needed to happen in um, three different uh, iterations through the bubble sort, and we're done. So that's a, a quick explanation of how um, one type of, of sorting algorithm works inside of Java. And you can imagine it, it, it these are arrays, so it, it keeps track of, you know, it has indexes that it goes off of to be checking each time. And, um, and when it swaps the indexes, it probably uses a, a third spot in memory to sort of swap the numbers out. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things going on in the background, but this is sort of the visual representation of what the actual sorting algorithm looks like. Okay, so now maybe, hopefully, you'll see why the, um, these comparable and comparators, they implement a um, a compare method or a compare to depending on what um, what you're uh, implementing and um, and inside of the compare uh, for this example we have in an integer right so we have int let's say i1 and um, we have int i2 so the reason why we have two different integers that we're dealing with is this reason right here when it's comparing two different objects two different integers Okay, so it's literally using this compare method and then it will look at the difference between the two and say is one less than the other. Okay, and actually what happens is um, if it if one is less than the other, it will actually return a negative one. If one is bigger than the other, it returns a one. If they're both equal to each other, it returns a zero. So it will actually, I believe, return an integer value, an int value, uh, that represents the result of the comparison. So again, if it's negative one, then it is, um, you know, bigger than. And if it's zero, then it's equal. Okay, whoops, equal. Ooh, that's kind of messy, sorry about that. And, or one, and it's less than. Okay, is that correct? Did I do that correctly? Three and six, three is less than six. So uh, perhaps these are flipped around then. I wasn't prepared enough before making this video. Um, so that's what it does. It, it returns um, either negative one, zero, or one, depending on the result of the single comparison of these two uh, integer objects, okay? Uh, and it doesn't have to be integers, it could be uh, strings, it could be characters, it could be actual objects, like real Java, plain old Java objects, you know, like users or something like that. So it's all about um, which one needs to go where um, with the actual sorting going on. All right. So hopefully that helps put this whole sorting uh, fiasco a little bit more into focus for you. And, um, and I wish you the best of luck and happy learning.